An embryo transfer is the procedure of placing your healthy embryos into the uterus of your surrogate. And the actual transfer itself isn't complicated, but preparing the surrogate's womb for the transfer is tricky. It's where the skill of your embryologist and your reproductive endocrinologist really shines. Step three, getting pregnant, your embryo transfer, and what you need to know. You know, for most surrogates, the preparation of her endometrium is the most critical part of the surrogacy process. You know, the endometrium is the nutrient-rich wall of the uterus where the embryo will connect uh, and form a fetus. You know, properly preparing the endometrium takes an artful balance of medications, you know, dosages and durations, you know, every clinic has its own secret sauce to stimulation, you know, but here's a pretty common example. The stimulation protocol often begins with an injection of Lupron, right? And this is the brand name of a medication called Luprolide Acetate, which I may or may not have gotten that right. Um, Lupron is given as an injection to decrease the chance of unexpected ovulation. You know, basically, uh, it prevents the surrogate from ovulating so she won't get pregnant any way other than from the embryo that the doctor is about to transfer. You know, Lupron sets the stage for the start of endometrial preparation, which begins on the first day of the surrogate's following menstrual cycle. Uh, it may be a single shot of Lupron, or it may be a series of shots that will continue all the way up until she begins her stimulation. At the start of the surrogate's next menstrual cycle, then we begin a course of estrogen and progesterone, which is used to stimulate the endometrium. You know, these hormones duplicate the changes that normally occur in the uterus during a regular menstrual cycle. You know, and the goal is to thicken the endometrium and make it more receptive to the embryos. Stimulation consists of daily hormone injections and it usually lasts from 15 to 17 days. You know, ideally we would like the endometrium to be at least 8 millimeters and up to 15 millimeters thick. You know, doctors will disagree on the perfect measurement, but you know, a good target will be around 12 millimeters uh, and they'll confirm that with an ultrasound exam during the stimulation. You know, it's important to note that the stimulation procedure is not a single recipe for all surrogates. Right? There's a different combination of treatments that can be used under different circumstances. There are also other factors, personal factors, including the surrogate's hormone levels and her overall health. And your doctor will be monitoring all of these throughout the stimulation process. And in some cases, your doctor may switch between stimulation strategies if your surrogate is not responding to the first choice. Acknowledging that stimulation is as much art as science will help you overcome a lot of stress. Now the embryo transfer. When your surrogate's endometrium has reached its optimum thickness, the clinic will bring her in for the embryo transfer. And this usually happens around day 15 of her cycle, you know, more or less. Your IVF cycle should have produced several viable embryos and they are probably in frozen storage at this point. And the clinic will thaw the highest quality embryo uh, and they'll transfer it to your surrogate's uterus. Now, embryos that are not transferred will be kept frozen in case the transfer procedure doesn't result in a pregnancy and that needs to be repeated. You know, in some cases, uh, embryos may be transferred immediately after they emerge from the IVF, and, and this, is, this is called a fresh embryo transfer. But transfers using embryos that have been frozen are known as frozen embryo transfers. Now, many parents expect their surrogate to stay in bed after an embryo transfer, right? But this is not necessarily the case. Uh, studies show that laying down after the procedure does not actually help the pregnancy, uh, and that bed rest can actually lower the likelihood of a pregnancy. And some research suggests that the surrogate should walk around and be active after they recover from their transfer procedure. 
Uh, and that said, while the surrogate is waiting to become pregnant, she should definitely avoid strenuous activity, right, and physical exertion. You know, the embryo typically implants within a couple of days after the transfer, so she should take a few days to relax and avoid stress. The American Society for Reproductive Medicine has issued guidelines that, that clinics should transfer just one embryo at a time. Right, this is to avoid twins' pregnancies, because twins' pregnancies very often arrive with complications. You know, clinics in the United States will usually follow the ASRM guidelines, but some U.S. clinics still follow their own policies and they'll transfer two embryos if the parents insist. You know, clinics overseas are not subject to ASRM rules, and so they'll often transfer two embryos. You know, and it's a common belief that the chance of pregnancy is higher if you transfer more embryos. You know, but multiple embryos produces multiple births, and that creates serious risks. You know, moreover, clinic data shows that transferring multiple embryos doesn't necessarily increase the chance of a pregnancy, right? It only increases the likelihood of twins or triplets. Data on U.S. IVF procedures compiled by the CDC shows that transferring more embryos does not mean more pregnancies, right? In reality, there is little correlation between the use of multiple embryos and birth rates. You know, when most IVF clinics transfer multiple embryos, they don't get more pregnancies, right? They only get more twins and more complications. The U.S. clinics with the highest overall birth rates are not those that transfer multiple embryos. Of course, what is undeniable are that the potential risks of twins' pregnancies, right? Twins' pregnancies have much higher incidence of premature birth and other complications, right? Over 65% of twins are born premature, right, before uh, week 37 or 36. Twins often don't have a chance to reach a healthy weight before they're born, so they weigh on average about two pounds less than singleton babies. Other conditions are more common in multiple pregnancies, including preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, placental abruption. You know, in short, transferring more embryos doesn't mean that you're more likely to get pregnant only that you're more likely to have serious complications during your pregnancy. Of course, you know, some intended parents ask for a double embryo transfer because they want to have twins, right? And this is often a financial decision, right? Because surrogacy is expensive and most couples can only manage to go through the program once. So intended parents who want a large family have few options other than to go for twins, right? But before you make that calculation, you know, there's a video that we've done on the financial and other costs of twins' pregnancies, uh, and you should definitely check that out. Ten to twelve days following the embryo transfer, the clinic will perform uh, your pregnancy test, right? And a typical test is called the HCG or beta HCG test. Uh, and this is a blood test that looks for hormonal changes resulting from your pregnancy. You know, a positive HCG test means that the woman is likely pregnant and a negative HCG means that the woman is not pregnant. In a few days after the initial HCG test, uh, if it comes back positive, then the clinic will do a second test to confirm the results. Now a beta HCG level over uh, 25 is generally considered a positive indication of pregnancy. However, the HCG level usually doubles approximately every two days during the early weeks. Uh, so if your pregnancy test is performed on day 10, then expect that a strong pregnancy will measure in the hundreds. Uh, and by 15, a positive test for a healthy pregnancy should be in the thousands. You know, a very high HCG test beyond that could be an indication uh, of twins. Now the success rates that are most often quoted by clinics reflect a standard number of embryos, right? Usually a singleton embryo, uh, and also assumes that the embryos are very good quality, uh, and they've been transferred to a fertile surrogate who's been well prepared uh, and has gone through appropriate endometrial simulation, right? Most successful clinics overseas will quote a pregnancy rate of about 65% per embryo transfer. 
However, you know, published success rates are really misleading um, because in reality, there are a wide variety of treatment options and variables. Uh, and one, one number can't possibly describe all of the expected probability of success for every parent. Instead, the success of your embryo transfer is going to rely on the preparation of your surrogate's uterus, on the quality of your embryos, and on a lot of simple good luck. Right? There is no guarantee that a transfer will result in a pregnancy. But a good agent in a good clinic can advise you of some steps to improve your chances. This is one of the best pieces of advice that I give to every intended parent. Embryo transfers fail. You know, even under the best conditions, with perfect quality embryos and an experienced and fertile surrogate, you may not become pregnant, right? This is not an indication that something has gone wrong, right? This is just a natural process, and it will have successes and it will have failures. You know, manage your expectations. Surrogacy is a journey. It meanders at times. It has setbacks and bumps, and as well as successes. But if you're continuing to look forward, the ultimate destination is always ahead of you. Now you can watch the next video in this series. It's uh, on your pregnancy and on prenatal care. Uh, but there are also a lot of other videos on a variety of topics that are related to surrogacy journeys and costs, procedures. And of course, you can always find information in the surrogacy guide at sensiblesurrogacy.com. Or you can send us a note to ask a question for one of our consultants. Either way, we're available to guide you through your surrogacy journey and just let us know how we can help.